Hi, this next video is kind of fun because it's nuclear chemistry. We're talking about particles. Awesome. Um, so I set up a little table here for you. Now, this is not comprehensive. These will be the particles that you'd need in a first year chemistry class, but there's definitely other particles that we could add to this list that you could Google. Um, okay, the three most important are up here at the top. Let's start with an alpha particle. You've maybe heard of alpha particles. Um, so alpha particles is really just a helium atom. That's it. Um, notice your protons two and S2 neutrons. Now this has no electrons around it. And so it has a plus two charge. You only have the two positive uh, protons in the middle of the nucleus and no electrons. So it gets a plus two charge. Sometimes you'll see questions um, where it will like show a magnet with some rays and it will want to know which way um, an alpha ray will bend. Well, it will be attracted to negative and it will deflect from positive because of that positive charge, those two plus charges from the protons. Now our symbol, pretty straightforward. You could just write a helium isotope. Um, so the two for the atomic number, four for the mass number, or this is the lowercase a in the Greek alphabet for alpha. So that is an alpha letter in the Greek alphabet. And you could put alpha by itself, or you could do the two and the four. I like to write the atomic number and mass number, especially when we're balancing chemical reactions, or excuse me, nuclear reactions. It just makes the math a little bit easier. You don't have to keep it in your head. It's there in front of you. So I write down um, the isotope form with the mass number and atomic number. Um, okay, now penetration. This is um, what it can travel through when, it, when we use the word penetration. Kind of interesting, alpha particles can be stopped with a piece of paper. You just put up a piece of paper, so here's this piece of paper. Alpha particle hits it and it won't go through the paper. Um, so it's penetration, it's stopped by a piece of paper. Uh, we have a fair amount of alpha radiation around us. If you have ever been around granite countertops, those emit all kinds of um, alpha radiation. I'll put a piece of paper on top of that countertop, so, and the alpha particles can't go through it. Okay, beta. So beta particles, they're actually just a high-speed electron. Um, so we can do E for electron, a minus one, because you know that electrons have the opposite charge of a proton. So we're going to put this down here in the um, atomic number as a minus one. And up here, zero, in essence, electrons have no mass. Um, now, what I write up here is going to tweak your brain a little bit. You're probably going, er, what? How can you have an atomic number of minus one? Uh, well, I promise when we do our nuclear equations and we balance everything, um, these numbers, it always works out to give us the accurate nuclear equation. Um, so with this really complicated in-depth um, chemistry, um, just, just know that um, the way we represent it, it is going to work out. Um, is this actually the most accurate way to discuss and talk about these particles and then how they interact? No, it's more advanced. Um, but trust me, your brain might feel like it's melting. It's okay, just say, oh, beta particle, high-speed electron, zero mass, and it has a negative one charge. Okay, now that word beta in the Greek alphabet, here it is, there's the B. You could also do a B with the tau, there's your beta, um, and do the negative one and the zero. Now the penetration on the beta particle is a little bit more powerful, a little bit stronger than the alpha particle. It could go through about a quarter inch of your skin, it can go through your skin, um, or, uh, or it'd be stopped, I should say. It would be stopped through a quarter inch of skin, or it could be stopped by metal foil. So you're thinking like tin foil, aluminum foil, gold foil. Um, so a thin piece of metal would be able to stop a beta particle. That would be its penetration power. Um, so it'd definitely be able to go through paper. Okay, now gamma radiation. This is crazy cool. Gamma radiation is pure energy. Okay, we only have one symbol to represent it. It's uh, from the Greek alphabet. There's your gamma right there. And notice zero for the atomic number and zero for the mass number, pure energy. Go back to the electromagnetic spectrum where we have radio waves to gamma rays. This is the gamma. Um, if you've known anybody that's undergone um, chemotherapy and then radiation, so chemotherapy, those are the drugs, the medicine that we take to kill cancer, radiation, right there, baby, gamma radiation, really high power, um, really high frequency, high energy, low, small wavelength, uh, pure energy, there it is. Uh, so gamma radiation. Now the penetration on this, um, I've read several different things. 
I think a safe thing would be able to say six inches of lead. Now, when I worked as an organic chemist, um, I also had a RAD3 certification so I could take mixed waste, that means nasty, cancer-causing, carcinogenic compounds, as well as radioactive compounds. Um, so when I would uh, work on these, I'd have to go into our nuclear lab and we had entire walls that were feet of lead, uh, feet of lead, and then those were encased with cement around them. Um, so six inches of lead. Now if we're really doing nuclear chemistry, you're going to have a lot of lead and then even that's going to be covered with cement to make sure that the gamma radiation isn't able to travel through it. Uh, so big deal right here, a lot of energy, very powerful. Um, next particle is going to be a proton and it is exactly what you're thinking. Um, it is just a hydrogen atom with no electron. So two ways that we could represent this, P for proton, um, and you could do the one for the atomic number, and of course it would have a mass of one, or a hydrogen, um, and that's really what a proton is when it doesn't have an electron. Now if we were doing like acid-base chemistry, the way you and I have been used to writing with traditional chemistry, a proton is with that positive, meaning that it lost the electron. But in nuclear chemistry, you can just do the hydrogen with the one and the one, and it's understood to be the proton. Uh, next, a positron. Again, another place where your brain might feel tweaked just a little bit. Um, the positron is the opposite, in essence, of a beta particle. So notice we do E, like it's an electron, but it's a positive charge. It's a plus one, an electron with a plus one. I know your brain starts going, what are you talking about? Um, it has a mass number of zero. You can also use the beta from our Greek alphabet, do the plus one and the zero. Kind of fun. Einstein predicted this, but he didn't live to see it discovered. He predicted antimatter, and this is it. Um, the anti-electron, antimatter, um, is going to be the positron. Um, so with this, again, take it with a grain of salt and go, wow, that's cool, I'm learning something new in nuclear chemistry. Um, a neutron, how we represent a neutron, of course, it has no protons, so it's going to be a zero for the atomic number, and then it will have a mass of one. So our basic uh, nuclear particles that you're going to use in a first year chemistry class. It'll be fun using these. Um, look at the other, um, the other videos on the nuclear playlist and you'll see how to use all of these. All right, have a nice day. Thanks, bye.